This is the Tesla 2 CCS adapter, and if you can get your hands on one of these, it enables fast charging at non-Tesla CCS stations. Fortunately, most new Tesla cars have the ability to use this adapter, so if you buy a Tesla today, odds are the adapter is gonna work on your car. But mine is a 2019 build and doesn't have support for this guy. So, fortunately, I'm not completely out of luck here, and a lot of people in the Tesla community have figured out a way to add support to your car if it does not work with this adapter. And last week, I did it to my car. So let's walk through everything that is needed to add CCS adapter support to your Tesla if it doesn't have it already, what the install process is like, and then do some testing. First off, I just wanna shout out Falcon 4 and some other members of the Tesla community. They did all the hard work here and figured out that this was possible in older cars. I'm just relaying a lot of the information in video format and walking through the install process. So I've got a late 2019 build Model 3, and if I go into settings, go into software, and then additional vehicle information, you can see that my car says CCS adapter support not installed. If your car says CCS adapter support enabled, then you're good. You can order one of these adapters and be ready to go, but unfortunately I wasn't that lucky. Tesla seems to have started adding CCS adapter support in October of 2021, so there is a chance that if your car was built after that date, you already have CCS adapter support. However, throughout the chip shortage, they actually started shipping a stripped down version of this upgraded chip that you need for CCS adapter support, so there's still a chance that your car might not have this support. After talking with some new Tesla owners, it seems all new cars right now are shipping with support, so that is good news. But for my car that was built two years ago, I definitely need to do this retrofit. So after reading through the forums, this guy right here is the key to making this work. This is the Generation 4 Charge Port ECU, or Electronic Control Unit. And it's the key to adding this CCS adapter support to your car. So any new cars are shipping with this Gen 4 ECU but a lot of the old cars don't have it. This is the part that controls charging on the car, and if your car was built prior to October 2021, you not only need this Gen 4 ECU, but you also need a completely new wiring harness to even install this ECU, which is the situation I'm in. So to recap, I will need three things to add support to my car. The upgraded Gen 4 ECU, and I'll flash the part number up on the screen here as well as put it down in the description. A new wiring harness so that I can actually install the upgraded ECU. And the actual Tesla to CCS adapter to enable fast charging on CCS plugs. Once I had figured this all out, I figured I would go ahead and ask Tesla first because these are all official Tesla parts for the most part. There should be a way for them to install it for me so I'm not risking any issues with my car. And here was their response when I asked about it. Tesla does not currently offer the retrofit slash upgrade. As soon as a retrofit is released, you'll be able to purchase through the Tesla app under upgrades. But I've already got the Tesla to CCS adapter. I wanna charge on CCS stations, so it was up to me to get these parts. First off, the Gen 4 ECU. You can get this direct from Tesla, but I figured after the response that they gave me, this probably wasn't the best idea, and I figured I would just go through a Tesla parts distributor to buy this part, so I reached out to one and just gave them my VIN, and they ordered everything using my car. So it is an official Tesla part, and I'll link the site I use down below if you wanna order one for yourself. So now that I've got the ECU in hand, now is time for the wiring harness. Again, I wanna shout out Falcon 4 here and the Tesla community for doing all the hard work. They figured out exactly what is needed and pre-built these wiring harnesses that are available to order at the link below. And after a couple weeks, I had the wiring harness in hand. As for the adapter itself, I covered this in my last video. This is an official Tesla to CCS adapter, but it is the South Korean version. It still works with US cars, but it, they are not selling it in the US store right now. You can still order it though through a forwarder in South Korea, and I will link the site I use down below. I felt like I was collecting Egyptian God cards here, but now I've got everything ready to do this retrofit. So I've got the ECU, I've got the wiring harness, and I've got the CCS adapter. And once I have all these, I'm essentially good to start working on the car 
and retrofitting this ECU into my vehicle. The only tool you'll really need for this is a 10 millimeter socket wrench for undoing some bolts in the car. Uh, you might want some trim removal tools as well because there are some trim pieces you ha have to remove, but that can be done with hands or a flathead screwdriver as well. Before we do any work on the car, we actually need to download the latest update, but not install it. The reason for this is as soon as we install this new ECU, the car is gonna freak out and throw a ton of errors. Once it's installed, we're gonna push that update, it's gonna flash the ECU and get rid of all those errors so that it connects to the car and it's working properly. This can be any update, it doesn't matter, it just needs an update to flash that ECU and make sure it's correctly connected to the car. So if we go into software here, we can see that our software is has an update available and basically as soon as I hit that software update button it's going to push the latest install and the important thing to remember here is that we don't want to install the update yet we just want it downloaded and ready to install so that once we switch the car back on we are ready to push that update and flash the ECU Next, we've got to shut the car down so it's safe to work on. First is disconnecting the 12 volt battery, which is located up front in the frunk. There's a little plastic plate covering the main components up there that you can just pop off with your hands. And here's where you'll need that 10 millimeter socket wrench to undo the battery. There's a small bracket that attaches to the battery terminal, so we just need to loosen it with that wrench and disconnect it. And after it's removed, I would just cover it with a cloth and kind of tuck it away so it's not gonna swing around and potentially reconnect the battery while we're working on the car. As soon as you do that, you're gonna see the car throw some errors. I saw one that said low voltage battery disconnected and electrical system is unable to support all features which is completely normal here because we literally just disconnected the 12 volt battery. Next, we need to disconnect the main battery and that is located under the rear seats. There's some little tabs on either side. You just have to slide to one side and that will pop the seat off. And if you've done it properly, the whole back cushion should come off. Now on the passenger side, there is a terminal that connects the main battery. There's a little flap you have to swivel down and then just lift up to completely disconnect the pack. You should hear a thunk when this happens and that is completely normal. That's just the main contactors disconnecting the battery from the car. If you've done everything correctly, the car should be completely off now. The screen should be off, the AC should be off. You shouldn't hear any noise from the car. It should be completely dead at this point. If it isn't, double check that everything's disconnected before you do any work on the car. Once the car shut off, we are ready to start working on the ECU swap. It's located right near the charge port, but first we need to remove this plastic trim from inside the trunk. There's clips on either side, so just undo those trim clips and the whole piece should pop off. Next, we need to peel back the liner on the driver's side or the charge port side to get to that ECU. It's kind of difficult, but you should be able to peel it back and see this little chip. The ECU is connected directly to the frame of the car with another 10 millimeter bolt, so we can just use that same socket wrench to release it from the car. And there are some plastic pieces holding it to the car, so you'll have to kind of slide it to the right to remove it completely. Before you go any further, I would definitely recommend taking a picture just so you know exactly where all of these wiring connectors are plugged in. And after you do that, you can work on undoing all of those connectors that are holding the wiring into the ECU. There are three of them in total, just take note of where they're connected in. And now you can get that new ECU ready to move into the car. If you've got an older Model 3 like I do, you'll need that wiring harness adapter, and I would go ahead and attach that before you install it back in the car. If you have a Tesla built after October 2021, Odds are you have the right wiring harness, you just need to swap this ECU out. But now that mine is ready, I can start installing it back into the car. So we just need to make sure all three of those connectors are attached, then slide it to the left to slide it into the car, and then screw that bolt back on. I noticed once it was in there, because I'm using that wiring adapter, it was a bit loose, so I just used some zip ties to keep everything contained a bit. Once that chip is reconnected, I wouldn't start putting everything completely back together yet, but we will get the car powered back up to test that everything is working correctly. So we'll just go in reverse here. First, we'll reconnect the main battery. So we'll go into that back seat and reconnect that little contactor. And you do have to flip that bracket up so that it locks into place and actually connects. And then we can go up front and reconnect that bracket and tighten down that bolt with the socket wrench to connect the 12 volt battery. Once everything is connected, your car should start powering back up. This took a few minutes for me, so don't worry if it's dark for a little bit before the screen comes back on. And once everything is back up, you will see some errors on the screen. Don't be alarmed by these. This is why we have that software update ready to go. 
I saw two errors in my car. It said software update required and charge cable connected to vehicle. This is just because the ECU is freaking out and doesn't know what's going on with the charge port. I did confirm that you still are able to drive with these errors. You can actually manually override that charge cable connected error and continue to drive. So in the case of an emergency, we're in the middle of working on this and need to drive somewhere, you can still do that. And this is exactly why we've got that software update ready to go. When you're ready, you can hit the install now button on that update and to skip the countdown, you can just repeatedly tap on the countdown. Now that update will get going, and I saw it doing all kinds of stuff, including updating electronic control units, which is exactly what we want here. This took about 25 to 30 minutes for the car to update, and during this time you should hear a bunch of noises coming from the car, some whirring, some clunking, and all that's completely normal. Don't worry about that. Okay, so the update is done now. Let's go into our car settings here. And this is the moment of truth right here to see if we now have CCS adapter support. So we're gonna go into software, and we're go, gonna go into additional vehicle information. And look at that, we did it. <laughs> so now we're seeing CCS adapter support enabled and that is great news. So everything we just did worked. It now has CCS adapter support. First off, I'm gonna button the car back up, get it all ready to drive and kind of close back up and walk you through that. And then I'm actually gonna plug in and charge here to make sure just regular charging is working on my mobile adapter and uh, then we'll go test some stations and see if this works on Electrify America or some other CCS station. Now we can work on getting the car back together and a lot of this is just trim pieces so the order is less important. But first I reconnected the liner on the left side of the car which is really fussy here. It'll take some time to get in the right place. And then I reconnected that shrunk plastic piece that helps hold everything in place. And just make sure you get those two trim clips on either side. Then I reconnected the back seat. There's these two kind of brackets on the front side that hold the whole back cushion in place. Just make sure those are properly connected. And then I replaced the plastic cover on the frunk. And now it's time to test charging and make sure everything is working right on the car. Before I left the garage, I did test charging with my mobile adapter and this worked completely fine, which is a good sign everything should be working properly. Next, I went over to a local charge point station that has both CCS and Chatamo plugs. So first thing I wanna check here is obviously the CCS adapter since that's what we just tried support for. And right now my battery is at 34%, so we're definitely not gonna see the highest charge rates right now. This is just kind of a proof of concept or a test to make sure that this ECU is gonna work properly. So first we'll test the CCS adapter. So we will activate the station, attach our adapter and plug in thinking on this end and we're green on the Tesla so we're successfully charging it's gonna start out real slow but it is gonna ramp up so we are up to around 50 kW right now and finally I wanted to do a high-speed CCS test with this adapter to see what kind of speeds we could get okay so it is the next day actually I need a break from working on my car so took a little break and we are back the next day and I've let my battery drain down to around 27%. And this is gonna be our full on max speed test. So hopefully by the time I get to the charger, I'm gonna be down below 20 and we can see really high charging speeds and see what this charger can handle on a really fast station. So our benchmark really is V3 supercharging with Tesla's. So 250 kW is the max for this car and that is with battery preconditioning. So what I'm gonna do is actually navigate to the closest supercharger and that will kick on the battery preconditioning so that it is ready to supercharge there. But we're actually gonna drive past it up to another fast charger, an EVgo one actually up in Delaware is the closest one. So we're gonna head to that one, give it a shot and see what it says. Okay, so we're here at the EVgo station and part of the reason I wanted to try this one instead of an Electrify America one is some of the Electrify America stations are actually limited on their cables. The current is limited. So I wanna see what the max, absolute max we can get out of this is. So we are down to, we're currently down to 16% on the battery. I'm usually seeing still the max charge rate at this battery percentage. So let's go ahead and plug in and get this thing started. So it's asking us to plug in first. I'm just gonna make sure that this cable looks all right. We'll connect to the adapter here and we'll plug in the car. And we're blue on there, so it's ready to go. And I'm just paying by credit card, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert my chip right here. And it's authorizing, it says it's approved. 
and it's connecting to my vehicle now and it's saying starting to charge on the screen in there, which is good. Okay, and I'm hearing some clicks on the machine. And we are already ramping up. We're at 160, 170, 180, 190, 191. Okay, so we're up at like 190 kW. We're down pretty low, but this is like, I mean, this is, this is past supercharging levels if you're doing to a V2. We're 192 now. And our, the EVgo station is actually saying we're at 200. So it is saying that we're over 200 kW. Which is wild. We're at 196 now. Okay, so we got to a peak of almost 200, which is pretty crazy. I think if I drop my battery down a little bit more, I could probably get over 200. We might do a whole separate video where we just try to get the max charge rate possible, but everything's working just fine. We're at 177 kW. It's saying it's gonna take about 30 minutes to get all the way up to 90%. And I mean, this is, this is supercharging level right here. So this is definitely gonna open up some new routes. This is the only fast charger in this area. There's no Tesla superchargers around here. Um, so this is definitely gonna give me a lot more options, which is awesome. So we're gonna wrap up and get some more footage, but I mean, this is incredible. This is definitely, if you're somebody that is looking for other charging networks or you're an EV nerd like me, definitely something to check out. Um, let me know if you wanna see more with this adapter. I know not a ton of people have these or have tested them, so I definitely wanna do as many videos as I can on them. And just let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.